Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a crime, drama, thriller film from 2006 titled The Departed. Ooh, is, is, is any toes in this shot? It looks good. I, I want to watch this one. That one's really good. Content cop. No, actually not. Is there any toes in this or not? Yeah. It's a movie. Did you know the movies have, 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 they have titties sometimes? Sometimes even dicky. If that happens, I, I ban you. I'm, I'm gone, man. They make out half naked? When? Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a crime, drama, thriller film from 2006 titled The Departed. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Some years ago in South Boston, crime is rampant and an Irish-American mob boss, Frank Costello, narrates that he prefers being the architect of his environment and that you have to take what you want in life. He goes to the park cafe to collect money from the owner and runs into Colin Sullivan, a teenage American boy of Irish descent who lost his parents and lives with his grandmother. Frank buys Colin groceries 26. and a comic book and gives him some money. He asks Colin if he does well in school Easy. and when Colin confirms that he does, Frank tells him to find him if he ever wants to earn some extra money. It doesn't take long for young Colin to start working on cars for Frank while learning about his life philosophy and becoming a sort of a protege. Frank tells Colin that people who cross him or try to tell him what to do meet their demise. Fast forward to the present day where Colin is all grown up and in training at the Massachusetts That's State Police movie. Academy. After his graduation ceremony, he notices Frank's car pull up in the street and heads over. In the car, Frank gives Colin a graduation gift and tells him he earned it. Colin is now officially Frank's mole inside the police. While Colin is busting down doors and running raids in the police force, Billy Costigan, an American guy with Irish roots, is still in training at the State Police Academy. Billy's mother dies leaving him with no immediate family. Colin passes the detective exam and is welcomed to the Special Investigation Unit by Captain Queenan and Staff Sergeant Dignam. After Colin leaves Queenan's office, Billy goes in. Billy is grilled about his family connections in South Boston, specifically his uncle Jackie who was a small-time mobster and bookie before he was murdered. They aren't convinced that Billy should be a cop but they offer him a huge tax-free bonus to go undercover and infiltrate the mob so they can catch Frank Costello. Captain Queenan tells Billy that he'll have to plead guilty to assault charges and do jail time followed by probation and a court-ordered shrink to sell his undercover identity and Billy accepts. Billy is released after four months in prison and goes to his Aunt Kathy's house. He tells his cousin Sean that he got insurance money when his mother died and wants to use it to buy and sell drugs for profit. He assures Sean that he's not a cop. The two of them drive around at night and do drug deals. They go to a bar where Sean strikes up a conversation with Mr. French, Costello's right-hand man, and a few other guys. A man at the bar insults Billy for ordering his favorite drink, cranberry juice. He overreacts on purpose, hoping to catch Mr. French's attention, and smashes a glass over the guy's head. Billy's plan works, French stops the fight, gives Billy some stern advice, and buys him a cranberry juice. Sergeant Dignam addresses the SIU in the conference room at police headquarters. Dignam is the unit's liaison to the undercover section and he tells the team that they will never know the identities of undercover people because there are too many leaks in the department. He gets the team up to speed with the latest developments on the Costello case. Costello is set to sell stolen military-grade microprocessors to China. Colin and Trooper Berrigan have doors slammed in their face while trying to get leads on the case because the residents of South Boston are afraid of Costello. At the same time, Colin is feeding Frank inside information to help him dodge the bullets. Colin meets Madeline, the police psychiatrist in an elevator. He tells her that he knows who she is and that he's a state trooper but also studying for a law degree. When Madeline gets off the elevator, Colin prevents the door from closing. He makes it clear that he won't stop trying until she agrees to have dinner with him. She is flattered and hands him her business card. Billy is eating breakfast at the park cafe while two Italian-American gangsters threaten the Pakistani owner over outstanding debt. Billy beats them up to strengthen his resume as a hardened criminal. He takes them down swiftly but breaks his hand in the process and leaves the cafe. Colin and Madeline are having dinner at a French restaurant. They talk about Madeline's job and enjoy a pleasant evening. Billy is drinking cranberry juice at a bar in South Boston when Frank Costello walks in and pulls up a chair next to him. This is what Billy's been trying to achieve but he pretends that he doesn't know who Frank is. Frank orders Billy to follow him to the back room. He tells Billy that the Italian guys he beat up are connected to the Mafia in Providence and that they'll be coming back to kill him. He says he can stop it and asks Billy if he wants him to stop it. They talk about Billy's late father while Mr. French searches Billy. He announces that Billy is clean and then smashes his injured arm against a table, breaking off his cast. Frank walks over and interrogates Billy about being a cop while hitting his arm with a boot. Billy is in serious pain but continues to deny that he is a cop. Frank forces him to agree that he'll stop dealing drugs with his cousin and gives him a stack of cash to get his hand taken care of. 
Collinet and the police are investigating the case of two dead Italian Americans from Providence, the men that would have come back to kill Billy. Colin phones Madeline and asks to meet up for lunch. After he hangs up, he switches the SIM card in his phone and phones Frank to tell him about the investigation. Frank tells Colin that he frames someone for the murders and tells him where to find the gun that will prove the other guy is guilty. Afterwards, Frank is eating breakfast and discussing his possible what? uses man, for Billy. Man, he whips out a severed guys. human hand and puts oh, it on the table. Man. Billy is shocked. In the bathroom, Billy rips off his wire and throws it out the window. Queen and Indignum, who are listening in on the conversation, are disappointed that they can't hear the rest of it. Billy is walking along the harbor while he speaks to Queen and on the phone. He tells Queen and that he won't wear a wire again. Billy is visibly shaken by Frank's tactics. Queen and informs Billy that Costello is selling military microchips to the Chinese and tells Billy to let him and Dignum know if he hears anything about it. Back at the office, Colin addresses a small team of officers. He tells them that Queenan is compartmentalizing the SIU, which he thinks is a good thing because Costello might have a rat in the state police and he doesn't trust half the cops. Frank and Billy are at a restaurant talking about Billy's dad, William Costigan Sr., while a surveillance team takes photos of them. Frank says that William would have killed anyone he had to in order to kill him if he saw the two of them talking. Colin's special investigation unit has one of Costello's men, Fitzy, in custody. Fitzy has already beeped his lawyer but hasn't heard back from him yet. Colin pretends to be Fitzy's lawyer and goes into the interrogation room. Colin gives Fitzy a phone and tells him to tell his mother he won't be home for supper. Fitzy does as he's told but he's actually tipping off Mr. French. Billy is at his psychiatry appointment with Dr. Madeline Madden in her office. He tries to get pills from her to deal with his stress. He's having flashbacks of the murder spree that he and Mr. French have been on while he's been undercover. She refuses at first but eventually folds and gives him a script. Madeline tells Billy that it's best if he gets a different psychiatrist. He agrees and asks her out for coffee. Billy meets with Queen and Dignam. He tells them that he's losing his mind pretending to be someone else. Dignam says that Billy has to keep going or they'll erase his file. This is Billy's biggest fear. Queenan says that they're building a case and Dignam tells Billy that he thinks Frank has a spy in the SIU. In an office, Captain Ellerby is addressing the task team about an operation that's about to go down. They are surveilling a warehouse where the sale of the microchips is going to take place. Colin is caught off guard by this. Ellerby reiterates to the team that Frank Costello is the man that they want to get. Colin tips off Costello. In the warehouse, the deal goes off as planned and the police don't get the evidence they need due to a blind spot in their surveillance. Billy phones so Dignam and tells him that he's positive that there's a rat in the SIU because Frank knew everything. He tells Dignam to smoke the rat out. Billy, who is looking more stressed by the minute, goes to a cafe to have coffee with Madeline and she tells him that she's already in a serious relationship. One day, Billy is roughing up a robber in his home for not giving Frank a share of the money. Afraid for his life, the robber divulges that Frank is an FBI informant and that's why his crew never gets caught. Billy is shocked by this and later tells Queenan about it. Billy and other members of Costello's gang are summoned to a warehouse to complete paperwork with their personal details. They're told to put their forms in the same envelope labeled Citizens Trust. Billy fills out his form, labels the envelope, and leaves. He goes to Madeline's apartment where she is busy packing boxes because she is moving in with Colin. Huh? Billy and Madeline talk, kiss, and make love on her ah! bed. Oh my god, I thought she was actually naked. Frank and Colin meet up in a movie theater. Where oh, Colin my oh my god, oh my god, my heart just stopped. I thought she was actually naked. Fuck, man. Envelope and leaves. Billy has been watching from a dark row all along but hasn't Christ. seen Colin's face. So he follows him out of the theater and through downtown alleys. Colin gets suspicious and ends up knifing a restaurant employee who is taking out the trash. He manages to lose Billy in the confusion. Colin and Dignam run into each other at police headquarters and they exchange harsh words. Dignam accuses Colin of being a rat and Colin yells at Dignam that he needs the identities of his undercover agents. Later at home, Colin Wait, tells what? Madeline that if he wasn't Sorry. a state trooper he could finish his law degree in a year. He also contemplates moving to another city, which Madeline says wouldn't be a bad idea. Alone in his office, Colin opens the envelope that Frank gave him and begins searching the names on the computer, but finds nothing. He realizes that he will find the mole if he follows Captain Queen and so he puts him under surveillance. At a bar, Costello has rounded up a team of new guys and tells Billy he can have the night off because he's using the new crew to- Okay, okay, okay. Billy Should I know we asked for this job because I, I, th I think I just got confused. Holy fuck. Dude, 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 dude. I've been into events, right? And, 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 and places, right? With some companies that that linked my uh my ubreats to like company accounts temporarily because we had we, they had funding for food right and i it just i just bought some food and it said just exceeded fucking daily uh allowance does that mean that i've been ordering on fucking company f fucking cards for dude dude i didn't even know man I didn't, I didn't have no idea. He leaves the bar and phones Queenan. 
He tells him that Frankie So who's been paying my food then? He's moving drugs with all new guys, but that it might be disinformation. A bit later, Frank phones Colin and asks him if he's heard anything about drugs or new guys. Colin says no and tells him to relax because he would have heard about it if someone in the department knew. Costello hangs up and tells Mr. French that Billy's nah, not there. Nah, I must have Colin is on the phone with one of the detectives tailing Captain Queenan, who follows him into an abandoned building. On the rooftop, Billy tells Queenan that Frank has dope coming in, but he doesn't know where. He says that Frank is getting spooky, it's, it's that he just saw him and he had blood all over his hands. Billy reiterates that Frank is losing his mind. He gets very agitated as he tells Queenan that Frank is going to kill him when he finds out who he is. Queenan can see that Billy is getting desperate. He apologizes to Billy for the trouble and promises to get Billy out. Meanwhile, Colin phones Frank and tells him that he has- Nah, 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 I just realized the daily limit is more than I always order in any order. So I probably just clicked non-personal back then somewhere, right? And, and it, 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 it didn't go through because the limit, the limit is, is too little. ...is the mole and that Queenan is meeting with him right now. He gives Frank the location and Frank sends his crew to deal with the mole. Yeah, Delahant, one of Frank's crew members, phones Billy and tells him that they found the rat and gives Billy the address. He tells Queenan that he was followed by Costello's people and they hurry to the door on the rooftop. The surveillance unit pulls up in a car outside the building. Just as Costello's men are getting out of a van with loaded guns, the detectives assume that Queenan must be meeting with Costello's crew and inform Colin over the radio. Colin tells them that Queenan must be their guy. Billy and Queenan are heading down the staircase but it's too late. Frank's guys are already coming up. Queenan tells Billy to take the fire escape while he stays behind. Outside, Billy is scurrying down an alley when Queenan lands on the road right in front of him. Costello's crew exit the building as Billy is hunched next to Queenan's dead body. Fitzy yells at Billy for being late and orders him to get in the van. One of the detectives gets out of the car and shoots Delahint in the stomach, which prompts all the detectives to open fire. Fitzy fires back at the detectives and wounds one of them in the shoulder. Costello's men quickly get into the van and drive away. At the police station, Captain Ellerby is questioning Colin about why Queenan went into the abandoned building. Dignam asks Colin why he was having Queenan followed in the first place, to which Colin replies that it's internal investigations business. Dignam starts punching Colin until Ellerby and the rest of the men break them up. Colin tells Captain Ellerby that he has reason to believe that Queenan was killed by his own undercover guy. Dignam yells that it's a f***ing lie. Colin demands access to oh my God. Dignam's locked files, so Ellerby tells one of the cops to work with the tech guys to gain access to the files and instructs Dignam to take a leave of absence, but he quits instead. Frank's crew is taking stock of what happened at an empty bar. Fitzy asks Billy where he was which leads to a heated argument. Delahent summons Billy to the couch that he is lying on. He tells Billy that he gave him the wrong address when he called him, but Billy showed up at the right one. Billy reaches for his gun as Delahent grabs his arm and asks him, tell me why I didn't tell nobody? Before drawing his last breath, Billy realizes that Delahant was also an undercover cop. He gets up and declares that Delahant is dead as he leaves the bar. Billy is sitting on a bench, waiting for Madeline outside her office building. Oh my Madeline God. walks up to him. She can see that he's troubled and strokes his hair as he leans into her. Madeline steps back and tells Billy that she can't be a friend to him. She says she's sorry and walks away sadly. Billy sighs with disappointment. Colin is alone she's at not police bad. headquarters. He takes Queenan's phone off an evidence table and dials the last number called. Billy is unsure whether or not to answer his undercover phone when it begins vibrating. He answers but doesn't say anything. Neither does Colin. Billy hangs up and packs a bag. He phones the number back and asks who he's speaking to. Colin says that he's Sergeant Sullivan and that he's taking over Queenan's unit. He says Dignam is on a leave of absence and asks Billy to come into the station. Billy hangs up again. Colin goes back to the table containing evidence and reads Queenan's notebook. He is thrown by an entry about Costello being an FBI informant, a fact that he was completely unaware of. Frank and his crew are en route to a warehouse to pick up drugs when he gets a call from Colin warning him that he's being tailed by two cars. Frank yells at Colin to get rid of them. Colin says, all right, and hangs up. He heads over to the surveillance office and tells Ellerby that he spoke to Queenan's undercover informant and he knows where Costello is going. Back in Frank's car, Frank sees the tails exit Why, the highway and is satisfied that Colin obeyed his orders. Meanwhile, Billy sends Colin the location. At the warehouse, Frank's men conduct the deal and all get in their cars to leave, except for Billy, who hides in the back of the warehouse. As the cars are leaving, the police vehicles block them off at the exit. A gunfight erupts and Frank's crew is shot down. Costello has a gunshot wound to the stomach. He is hiding behind a tractor and phones Colin who emerges with a gun in his hand. He grills Frank about being an FBI informant and asks him if they know who he is. Frank assures Colin that nobody knows about him while coughing up blood. Colin insults Frank about not having any sons. Frank takes a shot at Colin but misses. Colin what? fires back and kills Frank. Everyone applauds Colin when he walks into police headquarters. Billy is waiting in his office. Colin walks in and introduces himself. He tells Billy that he'll be recommending him for a Medal of Merit, the highest honor they've got. 
Billy says that all he wants is his identity back and the money they promised him. He gives Colin the password to his locked undercover file. Colin leaves the office to make printouts of Billy's file. While he's out, Billy notices the envelope labeled Citizens Trust underneath a pile of papers on Colin's desk. He realizes that Colin is the mole and leaves. Colin goes back to his office but Billy is gone. He sees the envelope on his desk and understands that Billy knows who he is, so he deletes Billy's file from the police database. Billy goes to Madeline's office. He gives her a buff envelope and asks her to keep it safe. He tells her to open it if something I happens to him or if he calls her and tells her to open it. Madeline starts to speak but Billy interrupts. He says that she should think about whatever it is and tell him in two weeks if she still wants to. Later, Colin is sleeping when Madeline puts a white envelope on his chest, waking him up. He opens it and finds a sonogram. Madeline is pregnant with a boy. Colin kisses her. Moments later in the living room, Madeline is sorting through the mail and finds an envelope from Billy addressed to Colin. She hears Colin getting into the shower, opens the envelope, and pulls out a CD labeled, Play Me Now. Billy's number is also written on the front cover. She listens to it with headphones on. It's a conversation between Frank and Colin that proves Colin is Frank's mole. Colin comes out of the bathroom and Madeline puts the recording on speaker so Colin can hear. She leaves the room and slams the door. Colin phones Billy who tells oh, him that Frank recorded everything and gave it to his lawyer for insurance. Oh. Billy says that Frank's lawyer gave it to him because Frank trusted him more than anybody. Colin asks Billy what he wants. Billy says he wants his identity back. He gives Colin his location, the abandoned building where Queenan died. As Colin steps onto the rooftop, Billy emerges with a gun and orders Colin to put his hands up. He handcuffs Colin, takes his gun, and tells him he's arresting him. Colin tries to talk his way out of it with no luck. Billy doesn't believe any of his lies. Colin tells Billy that no one is going to believe him because he erased his police file and identity. Billy punches him in the face three times and Colin falls to the floor. Well, As Billy picks nice. Colin up, Trooper Brown bursts through the rooftop door and points a gun at them. Billy phoned Trooper Brown because he's one of the few people that know him. They were in police training together. Billy tells Brown that he's the one that called him, while Colin tells him to shoot Billy. Since Colin is a sergeant, Brown tells Billy to drop his weapon. Billy screams that Colin is Costello's rat and that he has evidence to prove it. He takes Colin downstairs in an elevator. When the doors open, Billy gets a bullet right between the eyes. Merrigan tells Colin that he's also one of Frank's moles. While he's uncuffing what? Colin, Trooper Brown comes off the elevator and sees Billy's body lying on the floor. Merrigan shoots Brown and tells Colin that Frank was going to give them up to the FBI. He hands Colin the gun and Colin shoots him in the head. What? At police headquarters, Colin feeds the department a story that Trooper Berrigan killed Billy and Trooper Brown before Colin was able to shoot Berrigan and that he was Costello's rat. He recommends Billy for the Medal of Merit. Billy receives a ceremonial And, it, and then Frank comes in and then kills him and then fucking guy comes in and kills him and police comes in and comes and kills, kills him. Drug dealer comes in and kills him and some, some crackhead kills him too. Gets the money, goes to the casino, boom, His gets funeral. stabbed, Madeline everybody dies. And Colin are both in attendance but stand on opposite sides of the casket. Madeline is crying and visibly upset. After the funeral, Colin tries to speak with her by asking about the baby, but Madeline walks right past him without blinking an eye. One day, Colin walks into his apartment and is surprised to find Dignam inside. He looks what? down at Dignam's feet in plastic hospital boots and knows he's fucked. Dignam aims his gun at Colin, shoots him in the head, and leaves without saying a word. The end. Thank you uh, for watching. What Subscribe the fuck is happening? Like to see more videos like this. I watched a movie, but I forgot this happens. What? I've seen this movie. I don't remember every fucking dies. So I guess each side gets a gets a plus one, back to back. Bing, 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 bing. My goodness, man. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Hey, can anyone read this message? Um, no. Uh, I got food coming in. It's kind of kind of busting. I got some uh, some spaghetti. I got some spaghetti from some bomb ass place, man. Um, hold up. Let's see. Let's see how far away it is, and then we can make a plan about what the fuck we're gonna do next. <laughs>